Hey everybody, are you ready to do some drawing today? I hope so. Otherwise you've come to the wrong place because this is all about drawing. Yes, drawing 24 seven. And uh, really that's a lie because it's Wednesdays and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. But hey, while you're here, we do a lot of drawing. We talk about drawing, we talk about art. And the reason we all get together is to take a little time away from the busy busy and all the crazy and just enjoy ourselves with some creative fun. Now, a lot of people say, I can't draw. Well, guess what, gang? This is the show for you because you can draw. You just follow step by step along with me. And after about 10 minutes or so, you've got a drawing. It's that simple. And I try and keep it as easy as possible to follow along, pace it nicely. And the good news is all of these episodes are archived at YouTube. So you could just go to YouTube and search uh, draw along with Kyle, and you'll find over 70 episodes to follow along with. They're all labeled with the title of what the thing is that we draw on that day. You can also go to behance.net slash students and find a whole slew of these videos as well. All right. Anyway, glad you're with me. Um, yeah, it's, it's a weird time, isn't it? Nothing to do, nothing to see, um, nowhere to go. What do we do? Uh, you know, but some things are happening here and there around the country. You know, um, we were thinking about going to that new invisible theme park out in California, but some friends of ours went and said there really isn't just that much to see. Anyway, why don't we get to some drawing now? And I'll say hi to some folks in the chat, see who we have here today. Uh, let's see, who is here watching along with me on this fine afternoon? We have Sam and Stephen and Clever. Elizabeth, nice to see you. Ariana, nice to see you. Zuz, that's a cool name. Nice to see you as well. All right, well, why don't we get cooking, okay? So you're gonna need yourselves a pencil, a pen, a marker, a crayon, something like that. And uh, maybe you just you know yank a stick out of the ground and draw a little bit of mud all over your favorite uh, carpet or wall, whatever. Don't tell anybody I recommended that. To do these drawings, you're gonna need to be able to do three simple things, a straight line, okay, a zigzag, and a curvilinear line like that. Now, if you can do those things, you're in good shape. Curvilinear line, by the way, could be a C curve, a shallow C curve, could be an S like that, an S like that. But uh, that's pretty much all you need to know and all you have to be able to do to follow along. So without any further ado, we're gonna get started with the You Draw It. This is where I draw and you follow along step by step. And today, we're gonna start with a nice triangle. Let me show you how it goes. It's a right edge first, so watch this, I'm gonna draw down, okay, and to the left, like that. All right, now look, I didn't do a perfect, perfect right edge. Does that matter? Never. With these drawings, keep it casual, keep it cool, right? Now, I could connect these two corners here, one and two. However, I will not. Watch this. I want to draw out to about here and just stop. See, I just leave a little gap right there. That is step one. All right, now watch, here comes one of those lovely zigzags. Right, there you go. We go up and down, all right? And how long is that total space? Well, it's about the same length as this line here. It's always good to do some comparative measurement when you draw, keep things proportional. And now it's time for a bit of symmetry action. So I'm drawing a line up here about the same length as this line if I were holding up a mirror here, right, you would see that we're kind of trying to reflect what's happening on the right side to the left. Because now I'm gonna do this as well, draw down and draw in and leave it about there. Okay, that's probably a bit long, so I'll erase a little bit of that. <gasps> yes, I make mistakes, it happens about once a year. So that's it, I've just used up my allotment of mistakes for the year. Uh, Okie dokie. Next step, we're gonna come down just a touch and down just a touch, all right? Any ideas about what we're drawing? You can always tell me in the chat what you think is going on here. And now we're gonna do another zigzag. Watch this. Down we go, and there we go to meet it, okay? And that is the beginning of our drawing. Now, can you all do this? Can you all do a heart shape? Can you do that shape? All right, let's do it over here. Watch this, I'm zooming in so you can see how I do this. Come up and down, see that? And then around and down. That is the next little step in our drawing. 
loverly. All right, now this little line right here, okay, I'm going to draw it up and over. Okay, watch this, it's gonna come up and over. So I'm carrying it up and over and letting it be. Same over here, up and over and letting it be. Mm hmm. I think we might know what's going on here. Now right above that heart shape, watch, I'm gonna echo that shape like that. See, that's like an echo, the top of the heart. And then a nice little circle right there. It's more like an oval. I color that in and I color this in. One and a two. And what do we have there? Hmm, it is a bat. Now, why would I be doing this? Well, folks, it's October. So I thought, why not for our draw along shows for the next few weeks, do some really fun Halloween-y kind of drawings, huh? What do you say? All right, now I'm gonna draw a really long line. It's gonna come up out to about here. All right, I'm not gonna follow this angle. I'm actually gonna come up a little bit more in this direction. All right, watch, uh, about to there. How long is this line? Well, again, we can use comparative measurement. We could say this is about twice as long as this line here, okay? And now another one out this away, zoop, like so. Okay, it could be about the same length, maybe a little shorter. It doesn't matter, folks. It really doesn't matter. And now here comes a really fun curvilinear passage where we're going to go scooping on down, pausing for a moment, and then creating another scoop. Watch this. Scoop, pause, scoopity-doop-doop-doop right down here, and connect and leave that be for a moment. Okay, see that? We go in scoop and scoop. Now I'm gonna pretend that this curve continues behind that ear, and I'm gonna pick it up right there and leave it alone. See a little bit of a curve there. So imagine that behind that ear, we just keep on going and then boop, there's a little bit popping out right there. And now for some symmetry. Now listen, if you don't do the wings at exactly the same angle, no big whoop, don't worry about it. But up and out we go, okay? And then out again like that, there we go, that a little longer. Here comes that scoop action, we go scoop, and scoop, and pause right there for a moment, let everybody catch up, so we go up and out, and then a big scoop, and a big scoop right there. I'm gonna pretend that's following out behind that ear, and I pick it up right here, and leave it alone. Okay, and then I come this way, and uh, that way, see I'm leaving some space there because the next step is I'm going to draw a nice little C curve right here, watch this. C curve, see that? See how it overlaps that other line? It goes past it on this side and this side. All right, here's a fun little bit, watch this. Tiny triangle, tiny triangle, alrighty. And then watch this, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Some little bat feet back there. How about that? Now between this corner and that little bump right there, I'm gonna do a line that leaves space. Okay, see that? And a line right there. And then I'm gonna do one kind of going this way and one kind of going that way. And that's just a fun little detail to add to your friend there, your bat friend. Now, what do you want to do to make this personal? Remember, because with these drawings, right? We're right at the 10 minute mark. We've got an extra minute or two. This is where you can make this drawing your own. Sliding this over this way. What are some things you do? You want to make it Halloween-y? Well, you know, you could throw in maybe a graveyard or something like that. Maybe I could put over here little uh, moon right there, you know, and watch this. Let me show you something. Here's how I can do another bat really simply. I can go this way and down and up and across. And then whoop, 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 whoop. There's a little bat in the distance. And then maybe even a smaller one. All right, so we got some little bats coming towards us in a group. Maybe you do some little lines like that and a little dot, 
See, look, here come all these bats towards me. Ooh, that's scary. Maybe I could do this. I could put a little line right here, a little curvilinear line. And uh, let's see, I think I could put in right here. See that line that kind of goes zigzag, zigzag, right? And then another one. And then, whoa, 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 what am I doing? Making a scary old tree. A little scary Halloween y kind of tree right there. Maybe some misty looking clouds, you know? So there's your Halloween y kind of drawing. Maybe some bumps right here to suggest some little bushes and whatnot. You get the picture, right, gang? So make it your own. Make it your own. See how you can finish that one out and uh, have some fun with that. Um, that is the first of our series of, of drawings for this spooky season. And I hope you enjoyed that one. It's a simple one, but it's a fun one. And um, once you memorize those steps, you know, you can just draw bats all over the place. Draw them everywhere. Uh, draw them on your bank statements. Draw them on receipts. Draw them on Christmas cards. I mean, it's not like bats go anywhere at Christmas. They're still around, right? Aren't they? Maybe not. Maybe they're hibernating. I am um, not a biologist. I'm not an animal biologist. I don't know anything about animals, really. I just know how to draw them. That's the fun part. Okay, now we're going to start a new segment today for this show. Now, you know we've done in the past art history, and uh, we've done the doodle game. We've done some of my favorite books from that bookshelf back there, which has all kinds of neato stuff. Um, but today... Uh, oh, and also we do art tips sometimes. Today we're going to do art vocab. So let's hide our bat for a moment and let's take a look at this because today's art vocab word is chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro. I am not Italian, so forgive my pronunciation of that word. Uh, chiaroscuro is, as you can see here from this definition, the use of light and dark to create the illusion of three-dimensional volume on a flat surface. Well, what does all that mean? So basically, artists are using a full range of values from the lightest light to the darkest dark, and they're really showcasing that contrast between light and dark. They're pumping up that contrast to make objects look more three-dimensional, right? What a neat trick this is. So you're using shadows, and you are rounding out forms where you can see that if I have a rounded form, like a vase or something, or, you know, an arm, that one area will be catching some light. The light will be touching one area or shining on one area, and the other area will be in shadow. And if you pump up that contrast and make those darks darker and those lights lighter, what you get is what we see here. And these are the best examples, of course, by the master Caravaggio, who was uh, very much into this technique with his paintings. We see here two fine examples of this technique in place here. Um, and uh, I wanted to also clue you in to um, the history of the word, or the, sorry, break down the word. Uh, chiaro means bright or clear, and scuro means dark or obscure. And so you're just putting those two terms together, chiaro, scuro. Um, and this is really interesting, but Caravaggio, because he used this technique so often, I'll show you something neat here. Da, 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 da. We're just going to change our term here for a minute and talk about tenebrism. And tenebrism uh, comes from the Italian word tenebroso, meaning dark or mysterious. And this is the use of these large black backgrounds. And if you look at Caravaggio's work, you can see examples right here where we have this figure of Jerome completely surrounded by darkness, and he's lit in the foreground. And then here we have, of course, Judith and her maidservant. And look at all that black right, surrounding the figures in the background. And uh, this is what tenebrism is, but because Caravaggio used this technique so much, um, they started referring to it as Caravaggism. Can you believe it? So he's got his own term right there. And uh, wow, amazing. Now I had the good fortune myself of seeing some Caravaggio paintings in person in Firenze, in Florence, Italy, at the Uffizi Gallery. And I have to tell you, they were um, just stunning, beautiful paintings. They're really they really come to life, and uh, this technique is very powerful. So if you're interested as a painter or as a person who is drawing and trying out more with your techniques of, of shading or rendering, 
uh, take a look at some of these lovely paintings by Caravaggio. Look at the drawings of Da Vinci and Michelangelo and people like that and um, see what you can learn from them, okay? So that is our art vocab for today. Now, it is time for the animal and activity game. Now, the animal and activity game is where you in the chat will supply me with suggestions for animals doing funny, strange, unexpected, weird things. And then I will, in the time remaining, try and draw that for you. I'll select something from your suggestions in the chat. And just to give you an example, I don't know. It looks like I've got a connection. I'll try and draw something for you all in the next, like, two minutes, I guess. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Um, so we have, let's see, uh, da, 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 da. I gotta quickly look at suggestions. Uh, parrot playing soccer, turtle on a treadmill. Alright, turtle on a treadmill, I guess, is the way we're gonna go. I'm gonna try and do it in two minutes. So, turtle on a treadmill. Here we go. Let's see if I can do it. All right, here he is. Turtle. Da, 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 da. This will be the fastest one I've ever done. I don't know what's going on, but this this Wirecast stuff, I gotta tell you, is driving me nuts. I assume it's Wirecast. Could be YouTube, but I've been chatting with some, some friends and I seem to be the only one that's having these really bad issues. And I uh, need to get it, need to get it worked out. I gotta figure out what's going on here. Uh, but let's see if I can manage to draw a little something for you here. We'll try anyway. Okay, now the time might, might be out when I'm done with this on Behance, but I'll just carry on until it's done on YouTube. Okay, gang? So that at least you have something to watch later if you so choose. Okay, so that it's not complete waste. But at least we got the vocab done, and at least we got the uh, the uh, draw along portion done, right? So that's something. That is something right there. Look for the positive, I always say. All right, so there is our turtle friend, and uh, he's just a fit turtle right there. He's just going for it. And so I'm gonna get my gotta get his turtle beach bod going. That's what it is. Little turtle beach bod. All right. So there's one leg there. Let's get this other one actually back here and connect right there. Okay. That looks pretty good. Knock it back. Grab the darker color. I know I'm going to cut out here in a minute or so on Behance, but maybe you'll catch some of it. Besides, I know that um, a lot of folks dropped off uh, after we had that first little technical glitch right there. Um, understandably. I think they thought that uh, the whole stream was toast. And I have to tell you, I did. I thought it was just done for. Uh, restarted three times <laughs> with Wirecast and then, I don't know, came back. No explaining it though. No explaining it. Don't know what's going on. Okay. But for those of you keeping score, this has happened now three, three streams in a row. So something is definitely up. Not sure what. OK. 
Okay, there we go. If you're still with me on YouTube, great. Thanks for chilling out. On Behance, the uh, stream is over now, but that's okay. I'm gonna just keep this going until it's done because that's my job. That's what I gotta do. So let's get this fella looking good here. Add a little shadow there under that foot. A little dark and light for you, a little chiaroscuro. Calling back to earlier in our episode today, talking about that technique, right? Give them some eyebrows. It's always funnier with eyebrows, isn't it? When you draw animals with eyebrows. And, oops, do this little treadmill action here. Whew. Round that out. Okay, perspective, thinking about how that all works, right? It's not perfect, but you get the idea. And then here, we're gonna have the base. Design ourselves a little piece in the back here for holding that display that he's looking at. Telling him, hey turtle, you're going about four miles an hour and that is extremely fast for a turtle. Plug. And there we go. There is our jogging turtle on the treadmill. We hide our sketch and let's bring back our bat so we can see what we did today. And there you go. I hope you all enjoyed that and hope you had a good time. And uh, that's it from me. I'll see you all next time. Take care. Ciao for now.